In my video about hardened normals, I talked about the fact that you want to be careful using hardened normals during normal modeling processes. But I'm specifically going to talk about why you want to be a little bit careful using them with a subdivision surface modifier. I mentioned that one of the times to use them is when you're using certain types of modifiers, like the solidify as an example. But with subdivision surfaces, you want to be careful. So let's take a look at this. If I take a look at adding a bevel to this edge, I've got a segment of four and a shape of 0.5. We'll add that right there. And then we're going to set it to hard normals. Okay. So we take a look at this and we can see that it's got that nice rounded shading. But as soon as we come over and we turn on subdivision surfaces by adding the modifier, then you can see how that changes. We no longer have that well-defined rounded curvature where the flat surfaces are flat, the curved areas are curved. If we take a look at this on the side, let's come into a view where we can see this very readily. Let me turn on a little bit higher resolution. We can see that the curvature flows along and we have curvature coming well into the flat area. So, the thing to be aware of is that when you apply a subdivision surface to an object, it basically throws out this hardened normal data that's stored with the base mesh. What that is going to do is it's going to give you a false sense of what's happening with the geometry if you're using this hardened normal function when you're beveling geometry, if your plan is to subdivide it. It's just going to give you a false sense of what's happening right there. So you can see clearly here we've got sort of the gradient coming in. But the other thing is, if you look very carefully here, we have sort of that bump in the shading at this location because from a subdivision standpoint, this sharp edge is being applied to the subdivided geometry also, which shows up right there. So if we come over here and take a look at this in just the wireframe view, you can see this is the subdivided boundary that corresponds to this, and it gives us just the sharp shading, which is not what we want. So this is something you want to be careful of when working with subdivision surfaces. So let's, let's take a look at another example. Let's go ahead and add in our default cube. Do shade auto smooth just to get that going in there. Press tab and we're in edge mode. All of the edges are selected and we're going to come down here to our bevel tool, but we want to first set the value to two and the shape to one, which is simply going to produce inset edges. So we'll take it like that and we're going to add just a boundary set of geometry. Now I'm going to deselect, come up to select, and then we're going to do sharp edges. So there we have those. Let's zoom in a bit. Then with the bevel tool, we're going to set the segments to four and the shape back to its default 0.5, which is a nice rounded form and we'll bring those in pretty close to the edges like that. So now we have really well-controlled geometry that will subdivide very predictably. So let's tab out, look at this in shaded view. So this looks good, and it's also going to subdivide predictably. So when we come over and we add subdivision surface, we get a slight bit of shading. So if you notice, there was a slight bit of shading. Let's turn that off. We can see a little bit of that shading coming into the contour. So we can fix that though because of our good modeling practice. Let's come back into wireframe and let's tab. So remember the subdivision surface is going to be blending polygons. Let me look at this here in face. This polygon is going to get blended into this polygon. And so some of the subdivided geometry for this are going to get blended over, which is exactly what we see. But because we put in this boundary at the very beginning, we can take advantage of that. So let's do this. I'm going to, let's come back over here into shaded. That's going to help us to see this a little bit better. In fact, I have normals turned on. That's just visual junk at this point. Let's turn those off. Hold the shift key and I'm going to select all of these boundaries that we put in to help control everything. Okay, so in fact, let's take a look at this in the left view and let's zoom way down over here. We'll come back into wireframe. So here is the boundary that corresponds to this. So if we come up to edge and we do an edge crease, all you do is you start mousing left, right, and we can see that that crease pulls those in 
until they come right to the boundary point of the original parent geometry. And then when we pull out and we look at the shading on there, we have our perfectly flat faces. We don't see that slight blend of the subdivision going in. So this is the proper way of approaching geometry that you're intending to subdivide.